Hi guys, Audrey here. So we're gonna do another video on partial fractions. We are going to do an example this time of a case two problem. So the thing about case two problems is that when we factor the denominator, it's going to end up with a repeated linear factor. So instead of having, for example, x plus seven one time, we'll have x plus seven squared or x plus seven cubed, we'll have it multiple times. So that's what's gonna happen in this problem. Okay, so why don't we start then with the steps of partial fractions? We know that the first step tells us that we should divide if necessary. Well, in this case, the degree of the numerator is four, and the degree of the denominator is 3. And 4 is indeed bigger than 3, so we are going to have to divide this time. So, so x cubed plus 4x squared plus 4x goes into x to the 4 plus 2x cubed minus 6x squared minus 6x plus 3. So we'll go through with this division. I'm gonna go through it a little bit fast. If you are having trouble, you don't really remember how it works. I did a polynomial division video that you can easily go look at where I talk a little bit in more depth about how I follow the steps. Um, so go check that out if you find this a little bit rough. Okay, so x to the fourth, we'll have an x here, x to the fourth plus four x cubed plus four x squared that we are then subtracting to get minus 2x cubed minus 10x squared minus 6x plus 3. Okay, and then minus 2 up here, which comes down to a minus 2x cubed minus 8x squared minus 8x. Again, we are subtracting that to give us negative 2x squared plus 2x plus three. So this results in the integral x minus two plus negative two x squared plus two x plus three all over x cubed plus four x squared plus four x dx. Okay, so now before we go directly into the partial fractions, anytime before we go into partial fractions, especially after division, we should always check to see if the substitution works. And the substitution would be letting u equal to the denominator. So if u is equal to the denominator, the question is, is the numerator the derivative of the denominator or is the numerator some multiple of the derivative of the denominator? If that works, if you can go through with the substitution, you're gonna save yourself a lot of hassle from the partial fraction. So we always wanna check this. So our du in this case would be three x squared plus eight x plus four dx. And the answer is that minus two x squared plus two x plus three is not a multiple of that du we just got. So this substitution, does not work, which means we are going to have to go through with the partial fractions. And our next step of partial fractions is going to be to factor the denominator. So we have x cubed plus 4x squared plus 4x. The greatest common factor is x, so we'll factor that out to end up with x squared plus 4x plus 4. Now we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give me four and that add to give me four. So those two numbers are going to be two and two, which means that we have x times x plus two squared here. Two times two is four, two plus two is four. Okay, so this brings us to our third step, which is to create the partial fractions decomposition. So we wanna know how can we decompose negative two x squared plus two x plus three, over x times x plus two squared. Now, that x is a linear factor. It occurs one time, which means it gets one fraction. So we're gonna have a over x here, plus x plus two is also a linear factor, but note that it occurs two times, which means it gets two fractions all to itself. I'm gonna use my initials, so go with e over x plus two plus b over x plus two squared. So that x plus two, remember, got two fractions to itself each time the degree of the x plus two increased until we got 
to the two in question right there. Okay, so now step four. Step four is going to be to solve for the numerators. To start, we need to take x times x plus 2 squared and multiply it by both sides. So I'll end up with negative 2x squared plus 2x plus 3 is equal to a times x plus 2 squared. The x's cancel out. Plus e times x, only one of the x plus 2's cancel out. So we have e times x times x plus 2 plus b. Both of the x plus 2 cancel out, so x plus 2 squared, all gone. We just have an x left over. Okay, so let's go to the next page here. So we have then that negative 2x squared plus 2x plus 3 was equal to a over x plus e over x plus 2 plus b over x plus 2 squared which gave us this, just to kind of repeat everything that we had over there. Okay, all right, so we have all the information we need to continue solving for these numerators. We want to solve by plugging in the zeros of the numerator. Well, our first zero here is gonna be x equals zero which is pretty easy to plug in. So we'll start off by plugging in x equals zero. So you get zero plus zero plus three is equal to a times two squared plus zero plus zero. Three is equal to four a, which gives me a is equal to three fourths. Our next zero comes from x plus 2. x plus 2 equals 0 when x is negative 2. So we're going to plug in x is equal to negative 2. So 2 times negative 2 squared, that's positive 4, plus 2 times negative 2 plus 3 is equal to 0, plus 0, plus b times negative 2. So this gives me negative 8 minus 4 plus 3 is equal to negative 2b. So that's negative 9 is equal to negative 2b. b is equal to 9 over 2. Okay, so I've solved for a, I've solved for b, I have not solved for e, but unfortunately I don't have any zeros left. So I can pick the number of my choice and plug that in. The ideal number would be zero. If I could plug in zero, that would be awesome. But unfortunately, I've already plugged in zero. So I have to pick another number. Another number that's really easy to plug in is one. So we're going to plug in x equals one now to give ourselves negative two. Oops, I want that to be blue. Negative two plus two plus three is equal to a times three squared plus e times one times three plus b times one. Now the thing is, I already know a and I already know b, so I can just replace them with the values that I have. So I end up with three is equal to three over four times nine plus three e plus nine over two. Awesome, so that gives me three is equal to 27 over four plus three e plus 18 over four. So three e is equal to three minus 27 over four minus 18 over four, which equals to negative 33 over four, giving me e is equal to negative 11 over four. All right. So now I have all of my numerators. Now I just need to rewrite the integral as is. So I'm going to end up with the integral that we started with, which was x to the 4 plus 2x cubed minus 6x squared minus 6x plus 3 over x cubed plus 4x squared plus 4x dx is equal to a, which was 3 over 4, I'm sorry, is equal to x minus 2, 
x minus 2 plus a, which was 3 over 4, over x, plus e, which was negative 11 over 4, over x plus 2, plus c, which was 9 over 2, over x plus 2 squared dx. Okay, super important thing to note here, even though those numerators were fractional, I just left them as a number in the numerator. So 3 over 4, I did not bring the 4 down. I did not write this as 3 over 4x. That's usually a bad plan because it's going to make the integral a little bit more challenging to think about. Having that 3 over 4 on top, I can just think about it as a constant out front, which makes all of these integrals pretty straightforward. So I'm going to rewrite this just a little bit before we actually evaluate the integrals. So we'll, I'll do x, that's 1 half x squared, minus 2x, so then I'll have plus that 3 over 4 is a constant, the integral of 1 over x dx, minus that 11 over 4 is a constant, 1 over x plus 2 dx plus that 9 over 2 is a constant, so that'll be x plus 2 to the negative 2 dx. Now, all of those integrals are really straightforward. So we have 1 half x squared minus 2x plus 3 over 4 natural log of x minus 11 over 4 natural log of x plus 2. Reminder, that's the known form that we've been using a lot. I will write it down again in just a second plus 9 over 2 x plus 2 to the negative 1 times negative 1 plus a constant. So remember, the derivative of x plus 2 is just a constant. It's actually just 1. So really, we can apply the known form. We can just do the integral without having to think about a substitution because its derivative is just 1. So this is our final answer. And just to remind you that an integral right there came from 1 over ax plus b dx being 1 over a natural log of ax plus b plus a constant. Awesome. That's all. Bye.